Hey all here OS Reviews, one of the trends I've observed recently has been a resurgence in retro tech, whether it's the digicams, point and shoot cameras from the early 2000s, or simple flip phones, dumb phones, it seems that what was once old is starting to become trendy once again. So in light of that, today we're taking a look at two portable cassette players. I was actually quite surprised to discover these are still available, in fact there are two newer models that you can pick up on Amazon, being that cassette players of course were super famous in the 1980s and 1990s, made popular by the Walkmans that became almost a popular culture icon. Although eventually, of course, cassette players were succeeded by CD players just because they offered higher resolution digital playback, as well as the fact that cassette tapes can again lose their quality over time. As you continuously rewind as well as playback, uh, the quality starts to degrade further and further compared to, again, a CD player or increasingly getting into the 2000s and 2010s MP3 players, which of course will continue to preserve the quality of the track regardless of how many times you listen to them. So under that context, again, quite interesting that you can still find newer cassette player models floating around, and they're from a brand called Gracio, typically going for around $30 to $40 with coupons applied at checkout, so definitely going to be much more reasonably priced, and as more modern players, they do have a few advantages compared to true Walkmans from the 80s and 90s. For instance, the CR317 actually has built-in Bluetooth, so you're able to connect it to wireless headphones if you prefer. A little bit more convenient, you can be untethered, connecting it even to AirPods while you're listening to your analog cassettes, or of course you can still plug in a 3.5mm cable if you prefer. And it also has built-in FM radio functionality as well, along with supposedly a voice recording functionality that saves your content onto blank cassette tapes. So it's also going to be a recorder as well with a built-in mic on the unit itself. In contrast, this one here, the CR381, does not have built-in Bluetooth, a little bit of a shame. However, it has a micro SD card slot, which is not present on the 317. So this means that you're able to digitize your analog cassette tapes into an MP3 format. For example, if you're trying to back it up, and then you can pop out the SD card on a computer or smartphone, basically acting as a way to back up your tapes. Aside from the player itself, you'll also get access to just a quick user guide along with a pair of 3.5mm headphones, the pretty standard stuff, and there is actually an inline remote with a microphone, and otherwise you have also a USB Type-C cable included. The 381 over here, as you can tell, has a slightly different design, which we'll see in a moment. There's also a quick user guide, and then similarly, if you have a USB Type-C cable. Interestingly enough, this one does not come with a pair of free headphones in the box, although you do get a micro SD card reader as an optional bonus. So the SD card is already pre-inserted into the player, but you can pop it out and then pop this onto your computer slot, for example, to read it back. Now just a closer look at the design, I have to say from afar, I think the 317 is a little bit more interesting looking and I think has a more direct reference to the classic Walkmans of yesteryear because of the transparent window that you can use to peek into if there's any cover art info on your cassettes. You can see it a little bit more clearly using this way compared to the 381 does not have any transparent lit design, although you have a much larger LCD screen, which is also backlit. And since this one does have a micro SD card, you can also use it as a dedicated MP3 player if you have MP3s or WMAs on the SD card that you're loading onto the side here. So it's kind of a fusion of an MP3 player as well as a cassette player. A little bit of a missed opportunity, I think, that they couldn't come out with a more all-in-one model that combines all of these elements, including, again, radio, as well as Bluetooth, in addition to SD card recording and playback, into one ultimate model, but it is what it is. Right now, you have to kind of pick which features you prefer and subsequently maybe lose out on some of the other features uh, from those different models. Anyways, both of these units are constructed out of polycarbonate plastic, so I would say that is one difference compared to maybe some of the more premium Walkman-esque players that are coming out and being built out of aluminum or metal alloys. This is definitely a bit more hollow and cheap feeling, but not too surprising, I'd say, as a very budget player. And of course, they are gonna be larger at the end of the day compared to your standard MP3 player. That being said, versus a typical smartphone these days, it's not going to be quite as long, but definitely a bit thicker to accommodate the spinning cassette tapes. And obviously cassette players are going to be much larger compared to mini disc players, which were another kind of 
up-and-coming format that Sony developed similarly in the 90s to 2000s. Of course, this was also later succeeded by just regular MP3 players, kind of like mini CDs in a way, but had the benefit of having higher quality music playback compared to the analog cassette tapes. Now, if we take a closer look at the 381 first, one other advantage versus the 317 is it does have a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery. So it actually recharges using, again, standard USB Type-C, and on a full charge, you're able to get around 10 hours or so of music playback, which isn't bad, even longer if you're using just the MP3 mode. And you can see that the backlight here will also flick on to life and by default it'll start to play back what is located on the SD card and by default you do get a 16 gigabyte card in the box there's a dedicated power switch as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the right hand spine the very top features a volume dial in addition to the oversized keys for play pause stopping the cassette player as well as rewind back and forth and these particular keys, I have to say, are kind of etched in metal at the very least, so it feels a little bit more robust compared to the 317, which is technically a little bit cheaper and using completely plastic keys on the very top. But instead, on the very top strip, we can tell the radio channel we're in by using the tuning jog dial and you're able to adjust the channels using this method. And you have a couple of different switches on this model. For example, turning it onto AM radio, FM radio, either with Bluetooth mode or turning it into just a cassette player mode with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And it even supports a auxiliary microphone input as well. You also find a extension antenna for the radio functionality that can collapse all the way down. Although interestingly, it doesn't actually fold or pivot on its hinge. So it's always gonna be at this particular angle or you can pull it all the way flat. On the very back here, we also have the battery compartment. It's taking two AA cells. So it's good that it is standard and pretty easy to slide in and out. That being said, there is no rechargeable battery included uh, out of the box. That being said, it can be powered even without a battery just by using a standard Type-C port into the wall outlet or a power bank if you prefer. But again, it requires battery if you want to disconnect it entirely from any cables. And to open both of these cassette players, you just have to pull on the door here to pop in a cassette tape, like so. And you can see a little bit of the kind of gears that will then spin around for the cassette tape, rewind and play back. And then similarly on this model as well, just pull on the hinge and you'll be able to pop it in. So the actual mechanism for the cassette reader as well as the gears here, I think are going to be identical between these models reused basically. It's just the shell that's a little bit different. So I have to say that by comparison, the mini disc players from Sony have a slightly cooler opening mechanism for the door which is spring assisted you just press down and it will automatically pop out like so so it is a little bit more satisfying having that spring assisted design with just one button everything clicks open and then you're able to just pop it back in like this versus having a little bit more give and play to the mechanism that you have to physically open yourself so just the cassette tape itself is already larger than the mini disc player if we had to make that comparison but again has that iconic look you want to have the tape head facing upwards and then popping it onto the two grooves here and then you should be ready to go just closing it down pretty easy to operate otherwise i will mention that on the very door here, there's also going to be the loudspeaker. So you are able to listen to music even without connecting to headphones if you choose. Uh, so that is one function that is neat, although it's just a single kind of mono speaker. It's not really a stereo speaker. So obviously, if you want higher quality, you'll connect to external audio sources. Cassette tapes, as compared to CDs, as well as obviously MP3s, is you have to unwind the entire cassette tape once you've finished playing it back. So from a convenience point of view, it's not like on a CD player where you can instantly jump back and forth between specific tracks uh, or specific songs in the case of our MP3 players and smartphones. On here, once the tape reaches the end, you have to then spend around 30 seconds to rewind it towards the beginning and then play it back again. I'll also say that the way that you pop in the cassette tapes are exactly the same. You still have that loudspeaker on the door compartment, although because of the display and the controls being on the front for this model, for things like play, pause, skip track, saving it onto your SD card and reshuffling if you're using it as a MP3 player, we can also see a little bit more circuitry for that mp3 as well as display component on this particular edge which is missing on the 317. And here's a quick example of the cassette player kind of unwinding as well as rewinding forward and back. You can tell this is the fixed speed at which the tape here is going to be spun on the front window and also the noise that it makes 
terms of the motors there moving back and forth. Kind of interesting to see. And afterwards, you're able to then tap on play and it will start to play back at a more consistent speed. You'll see a light here also turn onto red once it is in that playback mode. And overall, it works pretty much as expected. Again, the built-in speaker quality isn't the best in the world, but definitely a little louder compared to a modern smartphone, that is, because you have a bigger driver in here. And both of these players do have fairly flat edges, so you can place them down like this, and they will stand upright, even onto the top and bottom sides, as you can tell. And for the most part, the quality you're getting from the cassette player part is going to be identical between both of these models. That is to say, if you aren't an audiophile and being super nitpicky, it is good enough. If you have a collection of older cassette tapes you're trying to digitize or revisit again, you certainly are able to do this using these machines and still get an enjoyable enough experience. Although every so often you can still hear a little bit of the wow and flutter. That's a similar concept to what we find on vinyl record players or turntables. And that is the gears and motors on here, depending on how fast they're spinning, will obviously impact the pitch and frequency of the music that you're listening to. So that's why sometimes on less high quality record and turntables, you hear a little bit of wobble to the sound or sometimes it gets a little bit faster sometimes a little slower it's just because the motors and parts aren't as optimized or fine-tuned compared to more premium turntables so it's a very similar concept on cassette players because of the mechanical kind of spinning wheels inside as well where you have a little bit of that bow and flutter effect if the components aren't perfectly optimized and because a lot of the gears inside of these things are just made out of plastic, inevitably they're not going to be quite as robust and precise as on classic Walkmans of the 80s and 90s, which were typically manufactured with more metal, steel components that both last longer and also have a little bit of that higher quality output, even though none of these cassette players at the end of the day are necessarily hi-fi grade. But on the other hand, there's no longer an object that you can hold on to if you're just downloading a song off iTunes, for example. So there is that sense of nostalgia in this physicalness of a cassette tape. And so subsequently, if all you need is something more disposable, low cost, you don't necessarily care about it being of the highest quality, then this certainly still at least works and again can play back the music without too many problems. Nonetheless, it's interesting to see how we got to this point uh, in terms of the evolution of this type of products. And I do like the fact that coming from a more modern era, they have embedded some touches here, uh, whether it comes to built-in Bluetooth or having, again, SD card recording function and playback, which are neat to have. You can check out more details if interested in these players in the links down below. For now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Gradio CR381, as well as the 317 Modern Takes on Cassette Portable Players.